Hey everybody, you might not know who I am. I'm Scott Homan. I directed a documentary that won an award at a film festival and is now distributed on Tubi and Amazon. I've been running Banana Island Films. You can see the logo here. We've been running since 2016. It was born out of a group of musicians in Hanoi, Vietnam. What I'm going to talk about today is how to get your film into distribution. And it's something that it took me a two, three, about two and a half years to figure out thinking that it would be a lot easier. I paid people and I eventually found a way. So you can go watch our film. The, I have two films out. <clears throat> One's called Hanoi Mixtape and it's about musicians in Hanoi and a music scene. And I'll get into it a little bit later. And also Witness Underground, Escaping a Cult, which generally it's about artists escaping a cult. And that's my biggest pr picture. And we got that onto Tubi. So you can go watch that. I'll put the links in the description. So... I don't really need to promote my own work, but I just wanted to let you know that I have figured it out. I figured out a few different ways to do it, and I'm going to talk about those today. But I'm also going to go into the, from conception all the way to crowdfunding and production, crowdfunding production, um, doing production, post-production, um, with the goal of getting into film festivals and getting that laurels, the branding of the film festival to give some more respect to your project which film festivals, and I'm going to spend more time on the film festival strategy than anything else, probably. And then the few different ways to go about getting distribution. And for me, that was the hardest thing to figure out. The film festival thing took me a full year, year and a half of like constant effort and, and also a really, really good time. And we did well, I think for a first time filmmaker going for it. And I want to discuss the value of that, why you might do that, why you, why you might not even do it at all and um the time it takes to do everything as well as especially the film festivals exactly the strategy because i learned from a group and i'll i'll plug them but also you don't necessarily need to work with them i'm going to tell you what worked for me although if you want you can go to them they're experts and i still value what they offer um i guess let's plug them now their film festival mastery it's john fitzgerald from slam dance film festival he also worked at afi and santa barbara film festival and Justin Giddings from the Kickstarter guy. I learned a lot from both of them, and I still work with them. I recently just worked with Justin on our, our crowdfunding, our finishing funds to get the film onto these platforms. So again, conception, how you build your audience, you're going to need that. Crowdfunding, production, and post-production are actually, I'm going to spend the least amount of time on that. Film festival strategy and being a strategist for your own film festival, a run. Crowdfunding for distribution, and then distribution paths, and then marketing. So I'm in the marketing phase right now, and I'll discuss what what I'm doing and what our group is doing. Okay, so if you're starting out, so this is I'm going to try to condense this as short as possible. Let's go for ten minutes here. We're already three minutes in. Okay, audience building. So when you have a concept for a film, you might as well just go create a free Facebook page, and you're not really going to need any more socials than that for the life of this movie. You're going to have a Facebook page, which is one place where everyone goes for the one location on the internet talking about your film. And it's a great tool you'll use later for further audience building, further marketing, and placing news about your film into other groups. And there's a lot of good groups on Facebook. You don't need an Instagram. You don't need a TikTok. You don't need any of the other socials. You don't need to build a podcast or a YouTube channel. All of that doesn't make any sense for your one project. What does make sense is your personal brand. So you will do all of those things on all of those platforms that you work with, with your communities, because people don't want to follow an, a product. They want to follow a creator. And you're gonna go and create more than one thing. So forget about making a special place for your project on all those platforms. Keep it way more simple by just creating a single page. And probably you'll do a website for that film that's a good idea. You can start that soon, but the Facebook page is simple, easy. It's free. Just go do it. And you can kind of test out all of your marketing and all of your branding and your imagery there, and you'll build your audience that you'll work with there. Okay. So start there. Email list gathering. This is super important. If you plan to crowdfund crowdfunding, isn't about the money. Of course, the money does help you get things done, but crowdfunding is about expanding the news about your film in a very condensed amount of time. It's also about building the brand of your project or your film. And I think it's highly valuable to start with a crowdfund. 
because you don't you, you're going to need to prove to others that you have the skills. You're going to need to create the artwork and the key art for your film. It doesn't, um, with a crowdfund, you don't need a trailer yet. Uh, so don't worry about that. When you do crowdfunding, you're going to be basically doing this kind of video, a talking head video with you and your team discussing your, your passion for this project and, and what you will do, how you will accomplish it and why it's important to you. And basically it's just talking heads and two minutes long and that will do the thing. So when we did it for witness underground, we did it with seed and spark and seed and spark is like Indiegogo, like Kickstarter. And there's a few others out there, but, but it's more, it's film focused and the women who run it do a great job of educating on how to do a successful campaign and what you need to make a successful campaign. And they won't let you be on their platform or crowdfund on their platform without them approving what you've created. So they are basically mentoring you and guiding you. That was highly valuable, valuable to me. I have since done a finishing funds Kickstarter on the Kickstarter platform for crowdfunding. And why Kickstarter is nicer is that they have an all or nothing approach. If you can't hit your number, you don't get any of the money. Nobody gets charged because nobody gets charged until the, after the campaign closes. And, and there's a lot I can say. I learned a lot from the Kickstarter guy, Justin Giddings, and I highly recommend working with him. He does charge a fee and I, you can check his website for how that works and reach out to him personally. Um, I'd be happy to discuss in the comments, some of the strategy around that, but he has a whole course, a lot of good information, a lot of strategy, a lot of outreach and it works. Okay. So that's, that's a separate thing. I, I think Kickstarter is probably the right move, but I do like the, if you don't know anything and you want someone else to teach you street seed and spark is a good platform, except they kind of have like limits on how much money you can make where Kickstarter, you're probably going to be somewhere between like 10 to $30,000 is like a good, like potential possible range depending on your team size. And it's all about how big your team is. You need a team to kind of hack the algorithm, to spread the information about your film, to get the reach that you need on social media with those different networks of people. Um, where seed and spark, I think is more capping around. I mean, they, they have different outliers, but probably something more like $10,000. So if that's enough to get you going great, cause you'll learn and you can work there. I recommend both. I think depending on the project, how much money you're looking for, they can both work. Okay. So before you do anything with, with seed and spark, they're going to ask you what your email list size is. So this is super important to get going early, have your Facebook page, get your website and have a funnel for gathering your audience and email list brand. You're building your brand. So the logo of your production company, the key art, the poster concept art, finding the people that are going to do that for you. It's worth spending money on those two things, your poster, and eventually your film trailer, once you have shot something, those two are going to serve you greatly throughout the life cycle of this film. And I will get into where to get guidance for the form factors that, are, that you'll need for distribution. And there is one website. So I'll just, I'll just tell you it's film hub. That's what I use. I think you should go there, make all the form factors that they, they need for key art right away. Just start there and you'll probably do another round later on, but you need that. You're going to need that stuff anyways and um, work with a professional, get key art, because you're gonna need it for distribution. You could just do some basics and then eventually go do all those form factors with someone on Fiverr or a great poster art creator, but you're gonna wanna spend money on those things with professionals. Get a professional poster art creator, spend money on them. I can recommend some in the chat or in the comments. And the in the trailer, having a trailer editor that's not your movie editor is essential. I tried to make eight different trailers of my film and everyone said they sucked and I've hired someone to do it. And a couple weeks later I had a, a great trailer that is still getting views to the, after three years and people still love it and they still think it's great. Um, so I paid a guy a thousand dollars for that trailer, highly worth it. It's a totally different skill set to get the hooks, get the music, right, build tension, get capture people's attention, keep your, your project memorable. Okay. So. Film reviews. Education projects. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to want to build your skills and how to do that. So if this is your first time film project, you, you're not going to have the skills you need. So there's a rule of 100. I really like, which is go work on different people's projects and you're going to learn on every single one of those do work, do the, do the work, put in the time. Put out a hundred of your own videos, create a hundred YouTube videos, something just to get you used to it. Try to make one, the, la the new one better than the last one. 
So those are education projects, your own projects. Um, you're like, and I will put an example, Chris Stuckman. He is a filmmaker. He's working on Shelby Oaks, his first script and directorial debut. He crowdfunded that wildly successful, but he didn't just start there. He did film reviews for over a decade and built a couple million followers on YouTube. It's a long game, but you don't just start out with your first film being a success. So think of it as an education process. Okay. Production. Everyone thinks of filmmaking to think, okay, production, that is what filmmaking is, but I've already been talking for 10 straight minutes about all the things that need to happen before that. And I'm being really, really basic. So you're going to need a ton of skills and there's a lot of courses out there. I'm happy to talk through what I have done and how, what some of my techniques I used to run a workshop uh, when I was living in Hanoi with a couple different filmmakers on DIY free techniques that don't require any equipment. And that's fun to understand those things. Post-production with, with narrative is way more straightforward because you had a script, the filmmakers followed the script. You probably had an AD who was selecting the best shots or the director selecting the best shots. As you go, there's a notebook that shows exactly which, which cut, which take of which scene is the valuable one to use. And the editor will make some of those decisions, but ultimately you only have a few takes of everything and your best takes are noted and you're just going to assemble the story with few modifications. Post-production on a documentary is going to be wildly different than the original concept. On a documentary, what you need generally is an outline, key people to interview, and you're going to then do, you're going to have 10x the footage you need for the documentary. In a documentary feature, you're going to have 10 to 20 minutes per person. Um, well, in my case, I had five different people in the film. So and that was the case, 10 to 20 people, 10 to 20 minutes per person. And that would be different depending on how many people you interview. Um, there's a lot of talking time in a documentary. So the, and the edit was like one full year for two part-time editors, myself and the story editor that I hired. I highly recommend hiring a story editor. If you don't have experience with that, they will make a lot of harsh decisions. That would be really difficult if it was just you as an editor, if you don't have the strength for story yet, and you can gain those skills working on other people's projects, um, or having a film education. Okay. So now the fun stuff, the film festival strategy. So. I took a course called Film Festival Mastery. It was a one-time payment. They still exist. That's the John Fitzgerald and Justin Giddings duo. The they're they're very easy to get um, talk to. Very easy to reach out to and get answers on your questions. They have every two weeks they have a live call in uh, for an hour where you can ask them your questions on your particular film issue, film festival marketing questions, and they're great. And you can outreach to them. So it's it's a valuable project. And there's a Facebook group filled with 100 and 150 plus producers, directors, a lot of them first timers, some of them seasoned. Um, some people join just because it's another great networking space. And I got a lot of value out of it. As a person who knew really nothing about any of it, about film festivals, it was awesome to go from zero to having a solid working knowledge that I'm now gonna talk about. Um, and it was worth the money for me. And so it might be worth the money for you if that's your situation. However, I also have a Facebook group and I'm inviting people in. It's called In the Lens. It's a private film film or Facebook group for professional filmmakers. I met along the run of my year long film festival run and through Film Festival Mastery and a few other groups over the years. Um, so I'm going to be reviving that. There's great people in there. It's just not that active of a group at the moment. Let's change that. Okay. So film festival strategy. There's something like 10,000 film festivals in the world and probably 500 have real value or less. And then of, of those, maybe a thousand, you could say, and of those thousand, 500 to a thousand, each category, there's categories for each film festival. So you have to do a ton of research to figure out which ones have value for your given topics. And you can kind of push the limits on a bit of those. Like you could have a horror that also is dramatic to be a horror drama. You could have an LGBTQ film. That's also a comedy, right? So you can like bridge the, the different genres, depending on what your story actually is and select festivals. So you want to get in the best festival first, um, that of all the ones that you decide from your, your, here's my dream list of festivals. You submit to the best ones first, you kind of wait around. 
and it's really complicated because they're all at different weeks of the year. Some of them are all in the same week, especially in October, September, October, November time period. It's a ton of festivals, especially the world's best festivals generally are around that time. It's not a rule, but it seems to be a thing. So waiting around for your submission to get selected is a pain, but that's part of the strategy. One of the things, so you want to get in the best festival first to be your global premiere. And then everybody kind of want every festival wants that, or they want your your next premiere. So it'll be global and then continental, like North American premiere, European premiere, and you'll have a nation premiere, USA premiere, German premiere, whatever the festival is, and on down the line. And you have to declare that it's that you only get one of each, right? And you can have a, a state premiere or a prov provincial premiere, depending on what country you're in, and you can have a city premiere. And then it's kind of no one really cares anymore. So there's an order to it. And it's important to, that your first festival is a strong one or really aligned with your project. Okay. So now you've selected your festivals and you want to do, there's a couple quick tricks. One of them is it costs money. And so some people don't even submit. So if you, another book thing I'm going to plug is and you should definitely read this is the rise of the film entrepreneur, film entrepreneur, entrepreneur, for film, film entrepreneur by Alex Ferrari. He runs the podcast, also great indie film hustle. Highly recommend it. In there, he doesn't go to film festivals, but he does have a strategy. If you're if you're like diehard about getting in, he will write them. He has a three in his book and audiobook. He has a three page way to do outreach to festival programmers to get on their radar and also not pay submission fees. So if you want to get into festivals, you don't want to pay for the submission fees. Um, you can follow his method. And, and his other big trick is to just go straight to AFM with your film and try to sell your film direct to um, people that buy films and skip the whole film festival thing. And there's good reasons to do that. Okay, so the strategy around it. I should probably do a whole video just on this because there's a lot to this. So you can think of festivals as like branding and giving um, respect and prestige to your work of art. So just getting into a festival, official selection, they call it, is branding your film with that festival. So you as a filmmaker have to decide, do I want that brand of that festival attached to my film forever? And you can just not tell anyone if you got into a festival that you don't respect and you decided to stay with that and, and attend and screen it, premiere it there, use one of your premieres there. And you can also decide to just withdraw your film from that festival because you learned that you don't want to be aligned or because another festival told you that if you go in that festival, they will drop you, which we had that case. So in, in my case, we went to sound unseen film plus music festival in Minneapolis. My film takes place in Minneapolis. So it's important that we got into sound unseen and they wanted us before and they said any other selections for the whole year, they reached out and said, your film's awesome. We'd love to have you in our festival. Let's talk. And we also got picked up by Twin Cities Film Festival up in a town just north of Minneapolis. And there, the one north of Minneapolis that wasn't aligned with the music of our documentary, the music inside of a cult theme, they didn't, they were more just a film, prestigious film festival for the region or statewide. Like they're one of the bigger, they're the, of the big, of the big three, they're probably third on the list, but they're also good. And we would love to have screened there, but I wrote, had to write them and say like, Hey, we, we will have to pull out of your festival because it screens before this other one. And I had to talk, I wanted to talk to sound unseen. Cause I like, I was like, I really care about this relationship and this like positioning our film with you. This other film festival also selected us when we did our big blanket um, submissions, but they're before, what do you think? I want to make sure that you get to make a decision on this. And they said, absolutely not. If you go in that festival, we'll, we'll delete you from ours. And I was like, okay, well, I would like that to be the opposite situation. What do I do? And they're like, okay, just tell them you withdraw from their festival. And then we're back in good condition, good situation. So that kind of thing, you kind of need to play with that. We also had uh, learning how to do this. We get, we submitted to a few New York festivals and we got picked up by one and everyone in the film project was like, oh my God, that's amazing. New York city like sparkles in their eyes and John Fitzgerald slam dance film festival director founder. He's like, definitely don't screen your film there. Absolutely not a world premiere. And, um, I didn't know what to do. I was listening to the sparkles in the eyes 
and musicians who were like, oh my God, we're going to New York and the expert in the space. And we decided to go and I made amazing friendships there. And I'm still like a fan of so many people and, and friends that I made there. So like there's that value that comes from film festivals as well. But it also destroyed our world premiere. And so every other film festival after, I was like, oh, no, no, I didn't do a world premiere there. I'm going to do a world premiere with you guys. They're like, that's not how world premieres work. You world premiered and you didn't even tell anyone it was your world premiere. Damn. Like, you guys lost your world premiere on, like, a, 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 the film, a dive bar film festival. So there's this whole game you're playing, right? Um, okay, so to get into a festival... So there's a way to do that. And one of the way to do that, that worked really well is what John Fitzgerald calls staying on the radar. So I'm kind of giving away some of his method, but this is, this is how it works. Film festival mastery. I learned a lot there. Um, plugging them. And this, this method really, really works and it takes a lot of effort and time. So you do your, you do all your film festival research and you decide like, okay, it would be really cool to get our film into these, let's say 15 festivals. Any of them would be great. So you submit to those um, when you want to, you want to do it when they first open up. Um, so they, they call it the early bird on film fest on filmfreeway.com. All the festivals that matter are on there. Keeps it really simple. It's a nice website, actually nice service. And I, they have a gold thing, a gold member. They have a gold level you can pay for. It's like 10 or $11 a month. I don't think it's, of any value there's a bunch of other things that you can do there but i tried all of those things and i don't i didn't get anything out of that um i think oh i think there was a discount this did work if you're going to apply to, if you're going to submit to a bunch of film festivals you're going to save like five or ten dollars on every single submission so you pay the ten dollars that month hit all your submissions and then delete it right but you can't do all of them because everything's skewed by like weeks or months and so like every every film festival comes live at a different time so you, I had it for like five months. So I paid 50 bucks, but I also saved probably like 300 or something, right? So there's value, to, there's, a, there's a reason to do that. Okay. Um, okay, so now you've selected your film festivals, you've researched them, you're gonna, you're gonna decide who to submit to. You submit, great, you submitted, congratulations. Now, who's gonna watch that film? It's gonna get kind of generically spread around just based on like the genre that you selected or something. Um, so you have an opportunity to write to the festival. And this is the thing that got us into probably half of the 11 film festivals we got into was I did personalized research on that festival to find out who the director was, what they're into and who the programmers are. And there could be shorts programmers, narrative programmer, feature narrative programmers and uh, documentary programmers. And there's many other categories, but those are usually available in most festivals. So you, you go to those people. Okay. It's just this one person. Okay. I'm going to write to, um, Jackie Tepper of dances with films. She's the documentary director, documentary programmer of this women run film festival. Awesome festival. Highly recommend. And she's super honest, by the way. Um, and, and you're going to talk to her and you're going to learn about what she likes and you're going to learn by looking at the past years of that festival, what they selected and find a film that is related to your film. And, and this is, this is a bunch of work. Um, and it's not as always easy, so easy to find. And what's easier to find is usually like their bio and like what they've published about themselves on the internet or in film freeway or on their own personal website or on the, the, the director programmer bio on the website for that festival. But you're going to do a little research on who they are. And you're going to take your, you're going to have, you're going to craft an email. You're going to write to them. Hey, every month, once a month until the festival starts or until their submissions are locked and you get a notice that you've been selected or you're shortlisted or you're withdrawn. You've been, you've withdrawn or they've not selected you and they will let you know through film freeway, but it's very impersonal. So this is an opportunity to write to that person directly. They have a published generic email probably, but they might have a personal email that you can find on their website or other places. Um, and you want to just let them know that you're a real person and you're going to show up to the festival and you're going to provide value and to the festival, um, festivals are going to want premieres. So that's like a, a status that they get to have, but also they don't want to have a bunch of films that show that are there, but no one shows up. They want to fill put butts in seats. They want to fill the theater with ticket paying people and, and create an atmosphere of, of enjoyment and make 
the red carpet's not really that valuable if there's no one to watch those people or take the photos. And they want more of that activity at the festival. So you write that. You write something like, hey, I just want to check in. I just submitted my film. This is an important thing that just happened for us. We got press here on this important podcast, radio show, in this important magazine. Um, here's our new trailer. Something, Some piece of information once per month. And, or that could be like, hey, we also got picked up by this other festival that we're really excited about. Just wanted to let you know. Just something to keep you in their mind as a person who is good at communication and that you are going to show up and you're going to be positive and celebrate what they do because you value that person. And like less selling, more like, hey, I'm a human being. Check out this other thing that happened. And you can... Yeah, say ask for them to like I'd love to have a chat if you if you are available. And you know, you can I never had anyone communicate personally, but they I did have a lot of people respond. Probably half the people I reached out to in that way, whether we got selected or not, did respond and we had an ongoing conversation where relationships build. And then once you go to that festival, if you get selected, now that now that relationship means something because you've been developing it for months. And now you're in person and you can make a different impression, an in-person first impression and, and show up and, and be a valuable member of the experience for that, that programmer and other people that you meet through them and through their festival. And so it's a whole social thing and you never really know who's going to stand out. Like I met, I met a Catholic priest who made his own film highlighting a Catholic priest Hollywood film. And I'm an atheist ex former cult member. Um, and we had an awesome conversation and we've been in touch for years. Um, or an, a Mexican woman who does dance choreography. Like we still talk after years and we are working on other projects together. So, and we like touch base and like check out with the next person. It's really encouraging. And is I have so many conversations and relationships like that that are make me want to go live in LA where a lot of these people are um, again. Um, so, and, and I am going back there. So that's all to say, like the film festival strategy is a human strategy and it's important to do the outreach to the communication. Um, and that will probably get you in. If you want a hack on what festivals to get into movie maker always publishes new lists every year of the top 25, this or that the top 50, it could be the top 50 horror film festivals worth your money, um, that kind of thing. Again, I'm going to plug the rise of the film, film entrepreneur and how to navigate this whole world in his way. I basically gave you a, the way that worked for me that I learned from Film Festival Mastery. Um, I'm going to be communicating this kind of information more on this channel, the Banana Island Films channel, and in In the Lens on Facebook. So check those out. Yeah, I'm happy to have uh, people that are going after it. Um, I'm going to be building a course that dives into these things more. And last but not least, crowdfunding and distribution. And I'm in the marketing phase. So we can talk a little bit about that. But the very final thing is distribution. There are three. Okay, there's four main ways to get distribution. One is that your film is well aligned. You have name, cast, or a or director, someone important who is a recognizable name. That will get that will go wildly in your favor. Um, you might not even you might get invited to festivals before even submitting, or I mean, you might be a shoe in because of it. Right? There's a lot of value placed on that because that person is a household name and they will come in. So most people I know are not making a film with name cast, and they're just starting out. So that makes up the vast majority of the ten thousand films that are made every year. So. And, and also if you're, if you're like in the festival run and you're like at that level, you're probably winning awards. You're probably negotiating distribution at those big festivals. Um, oh, and there's a note, like if you're an indie filmmaker submitting to the big expensive, well-known festivals like Sundance, Cannes, Berlinale, Toronto and Sun South by Southwest. And like, there's like 10 more on that scale, um, Venice, those fe festivals, like it's like. 0.01% chance of getting in. They get like 14,000 submissions and they select 100 films. So like the chances are so low if you're a, if you don't have a name cast, name actor, or a connection to a big studio. Um, if you do go that route, like, but if you don't, 
probably skip submitting to all those. Maybe the one that you think is the most aligned on the like the the off chance and you get an early bird submission. Oh, backtracking. Early bird submissions. There's a total strategy to this as well. For every festival that comes up, as soon as they go live and do early bird submissions on Film Freeway, that is exactly the moment to submit your film because you want to be one of the earliest films when the creative programmer is in their um they're they're ready they're excited for the fest upcoming festival they're ready to watch sit and watch movies and like be a part of the process and be in charge of selecting and deciding and then negotiating with the other programmers like hey we should put these three films together in this group with this category no we should change it you know like they're having this negotiation with each other and at some point they're going to have creative fatigue like I'm not a person who could sit and watch 300 movies and decide on the best 10. Um, maybe I could do like 20 personally. So like they're in that situation, right? And at some point they're a human and they've already fought for 10 films or 20 films uh, with the other programmers on the festival. If you come in mid or late submission, now it's not just like, does the person like your movie and were they impressed by it? Now it's, now you, now you're, you have to do that, but you also have to bump another film out of a slot that's already been sort of decided. You have to be so much better that it's worth having a negotiation to bump out. So be an early submission. Also, the cost is usually half the price. Um, so it'll save you a bunch of money if you do pay. And it's worth, I, I don't know. I feel like it's, if, if you get an early bird, the prices are low and you, you, have your, you have your goals and you know what festivals you want to get into that are, say, it's 20 different festivals that would be of good value. You really only need one good laurel. Um, films that have like 25 laurels or 10, like it really doesn't add anything it usually detracts and you're kind of only you're branding your film with the lowest level film festival on your on your art also when you do get distribution they won't let you have laurels on any of the key art you never see that on on netflix hulu anything else like you might get that in like a bootleg dvd company when you're traveling in another country you're like oh my god it has a laurel let's get it but like you don't get to use that branding outside of your own website Okay, so the three ways to distribute your film. And I tried all three for my film. And one was a sales rep. Number two is get a producer's rep. And number three is an aggregator. Okay, there's a fourth. You can go to distribution companies yourself. There are some who would let you reach out to them. An aggregator is like a distribution company, but it's more impersonal. A distribution company will, it's a group of human beings that will reach out to all these and make, and make um, deals usually probably boilerplate deals, but they might put your film with a couple different films and sell it to Delta Airlines or something, or an education outlet or Hulu or Amazon. Um, so it's humans making deals with other humans within those companies. An aggregator kind of has basic deals with many, many companies. And the big ones are, are filmhub.com and Bitmax. So Bitmax, is nice because it has a flat rate and I think they're British. There's a flat rate you pay once. And then there's, then everything after that is, is your profits. So once it's on those platforms, it's on those platforms with the deals that they make film hub. On the other hand is an 80, 20 split filmmaker gets 80% and film hub takes 20 for every transaction from now in the future. I like that about film hub because they're incentivized to keep on negotiating for your title. If they, if some company drops it, in three years and then then it's worth it for them to go try to sell that title again to other companies or or renegotiate with that company because they're continuing to make money with you or for you through that deal okay so that's that's where i landed but i will tell you with the sales rep how that generally works and i mine was kind of through a friend the sales rep he had he has done this he's used his relationships he has a post-production house in la and the deal is usually they don't take any fees up front and they will, but they will take an ownership of your film, some percentage of a certain dollar amount, and then a less percentage as that dollar amount increases. So it's like a, a scaled out payment structure where if I'm making more money and they're, they're making more money, but it's not the same 10%, it'll like go down in percentage over time, um, in sales, something like that structure. Whereas a producer's rep. Uh, and I feel like the sales reps are like really fighting for, for my film in that case. And, and they can be a, a great asset if you get the right person and the right relationships and the film 
there's a lot of factors to it, but they will work to sell your film because they, they stand to gain something from their alignment with that film. And that particular person wanted to be our executive producer to do it as part of the effort. And they still are because he gave me a ton of advice and I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Eric M. Klein of Glue Post Post House in LA. And then our producer's rep I hired, I won't name him. I respect the guy and the company, but I felt that because you have to, the difference between a producer's rep is that you have to pay them a flat fee and you can negotiate that fee because it's sort of an arbitrary number. Like, Hey, for this amount of thousands of dollars, you're going to try to get me contracts. And in the end, that particular person in company got me three contracts that were very bottom of the barrel from very bottom of the barrel companies that were very not, they were not good deals. It was like all the standard stuff that Alex Ferrari argues against and helps warn people against, um, Every line item in the contract was like, this, this is terrible. This is terrible. This is terrible. That's terrible. That's actually probably standard, but this is also terrible. And this is how they're going to screw me. And I was like, oh my God, this is like the most cliche. And all three contracts were like that to the point that I was upset with this person. And then I talked to my old sales rep and I was like, what's the deal with this? And they're like, I would never have gone to those companies. I don't want you to, I don't want your film to land there. They're known across the industry as being bad deals. So I lost the money and those contracts are both ended. And then I found a path to go on Film Hub, and that was its own challenge. But for most part, it's just technical exports of as a challenge and getting key art that matches all their requirements for all the different, there's over a hundred streaming platforms that they have relationships with. And they're basically making a deal like, do you want to pick this up? Do you want to pick this up? Do you want to pick this up? There's like putting your film out there. It's more of a tech company than it is a, a film distribution company. And I think that's valuable because they're thinking in new ways. They're not thinking in traditional ways of the film industry. So that is the, the beginning to end in. And if you have any questions, like put them in the comments, I will respond to all questions. I will be here to discuss all of this at length. Happy to dissect it. Happy to um, discuss with you. I'm hoping to build a course um, soon where I dissect all of this stuff and give you more resources to figure out how to do this. But I wanted to just kind of package everything in. Instead of make it 10 minutes, it's 40. So that's how it goes. Uh, me monologuing about how to get your film out into the world. The hardest thing that I've, I've found that most people don't even know, even if they've been in for in the industry for years, and I'm, I don't even consider myself in the industry. I'm just learning still. But is that they don't really know how to do the festival thing because someone else has always always done it and they or they have a film festival strategist that they pay or they have a connection that they're leveraging at a festival because they knew a programmer that they partied with 10 years ago or they worked on a film with that person and so they're just like hey can you help me oh yeah i'll put it in this touch with that person submit here and i'll take care of it that kind of thing so if you're doing it on your own from zero it's a lot but there's a way and hopefully that film festival strategy helped and if you want information on distribution, for me, that took me two and a half years to go from, I don't know how to do this. We just finished our 11th film festival. And I feel like I should have been given an offer um, that didn't happen. What's next? And then I did the sales rep, producer's rep thing. And I waited and was hoping and got bad deals and then read that book by Alex Ferrari. And then I was like, this, this is a strategy. Another tip this is gold from Alex. You... If you get a deal from a distribution company, go on IMDb, pay for their pro level. It's like $10 a month. And then search by that distribution company. And you can grab the emails of every director and producer who has a film distributed with that company and then write them a message and say, Hey, I'm, I got a, I got a contract in front of me for this company. Would you mind letting me know your experience working with them? It looks like your film has been distributed for eight years. With them, how is that relationship? Would you mind letting me know or having getting in touch? So many directors wrote me back about one of my deals. And of them, it was like 12 people out of 25. And it's like half. And 10 of those 12 people were like, run away. It's a bad deal. They're charging me money. Like, I'm, I've never made a dollar they suck at documentary. They're a narrative film distribution company. I wish I'd never submitted my documentary there. And then two people were like, or three people called me like right away. They're like, we have a phone call. I want to talk to you about this. 
I want to warn you was one guy. And so we had like a hour long conversation just about like his experience and where he's at and like happy to, he, everyone was so helpful. And then two people were like, man, that deal I got with them changed my life. I never made any money, but because I got in with them, I was able to make another movie that I also distributed with them, which I also never made any money because they're in charge and they don't know what they're doing with documentary. But then my third film, I realized I need to do a narrative film, but I like those people, even though they never made me any money and they're just sucking all the profits off my movie. My third film was a narrative film and they distributed it because they're good at that. And I made money and now I make money at filmmaking. And so I keep on, I'm making my fourth film. And so that was really incredibly valuable information for me. That was a tear the contract up and go independent because that company can't do it. And that's my final contract. I'm so sick of this other <laughs> producers rep getting me bad deals. I don't want to wait around anymore. I want my film to be up. So you never really know what, as, if you're learning how to do this. Um, but that was, that was my experience. I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm a big fan of film hub. Uh, in our first month, it doesn't sound like a lot, but zero was the number for most months. Um, we've made $125 on just two of the nine licenses that they secured. And those aren't delivered yet. The other seven aren't delivered yet. And they're going to be looking at more. They're continuously like finding new places for my film to go. And so the first two deliver delivered film um, places that where the film is now available to be in Amazon are making money. Amazon, like $80 and Film Hub, 30 um, something. So that's my true knowledge from a one month of distribution with Film Hub. There's money coming in and I can just get it whenever I want to extract it. So um, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Check out this channel sub if you're interested in more of this kind of content. I will be deep diving even deeper into some of this as time goes on. Ben Allen Films is my film production company. I'm doing more pre-production and um, help with other films on post-production and film festival strategy and, and uh, marketing. I didn't even get into marketing. That's the final chapter. So I feel like if you want, if you want to follow this channel, there will be much more information on marketing. Generally, it, it consists at the moment of me getting on big podcasts and YouTube channels. YouTube channels are the most successful so far and the most engagement. Um, so if you, like I started my own YouTube channel and podcast while marketing my movie. Um, that is not a thing I recommend unless you have a big mission to align yourself with because you're gonna have to find an audience. And the easiest thing to do is just put your idea or your product or your film in front of someone else's audience. So getting on, getting building a relationship, just like the film festival strategy, building a relationship with shows, channels, and other marketing people that can leverage an audience to like inform them of your piece, amazing piece of art that you created. People to be excited about, get on channels that celebrate that stuff, find those channels, do outreach to the show host or the show team. And uh, the bigger shows usually have a team, but it's usually still the host in charge of, of deciding what person to interview. So be an interesting person, be memorable, and do outreach yourself, create a spreadsheet with different categories of shows. And there's so many shows. There's like 300, 3 million plus, almost 4 million uh, monetized YouTube channels out there. And there's something like triple that in podcasts, all looking for interesting people. It's far easier to be a guest on someone else's show than to start your own show and then figure out how to build an audience and do all the marketing around each episode. Uh, it's a full-time job if you do it all yourself. And plus, it's probably more than a full-time job. It's like three full-time jobs. So um, I hope that's helpful. Yeah, stay tuned for more. Check out my channel and my old videos. And also have my other channel, the Witness Underground channel on YouTube. Thank you. Scott Homan, director of Hanoi Mixtape and Witness Underground. I'll talk to you soon.